Uh, LinkedIn has had a, a really big impact on the world of technology and business since its launch 10 years ago. Joining us now is the man behind some of the biggest moves uh, in recent milestones for the company, a successful IPO, hosting President Obama at a town hall on his very campus right here, and reaching more than 225 million members, uh, CEO Jeff Weiner. Good to see you, Jeff. Good to see you. Um, it's really interesting that this business is 10 years old. You came, what, four years ago? About four and a half, yeah. What were the challenges at that point as you saw them, and how has it played out those, those last four years? You know, the, the challenges then are, are similar to the challenges now. I think uh, remaining focused, uh, clearly defining the core. Hyper-growth companies, it's so easy to be distracted by all the opportunities you have right. ahead of you. One of my favorite lines in business is that managing hyper-growth is like putting a rocket out into space. If you're off by inches at launch, you can be off by miles out in orbit. So understanding what you're about, defining that core, remaining true to that, and then making sure you have a firm foundation underneath you so you can scale. You know, not only the right team, which is absolutely paramount, but also the right infrastructure, the right processes, and I think that's made a huge difference for us. Well, we're going to take a look at some of the numbers of the growth of this business, but I, you know, I did a LinkedIn profile in 2004, and it was, the company was going through fits and starts, but the, the, the growth continues. How is that managing challenge so different than managing a, I don't know, like a General Electric or some company that might be bigger but isn't growing at that kind of pace? Well, with regard to the speed, I think it's just uh, making sure you're prepared for the, the variability. You know, it's a very dynamic environment, so you have to be comfortable with change. Uh, I think you, you have to be really focused on what we call focus, FCS, fewer things done better, communicating wait, the right... Wait, give me that again. FCS, okay. focus, it's an acronym. We talk about focus so often, we actually created an acronym. Okay. So the F is fewer things done better, the C is communicating the right information to the right people at the right time and the S is the speed and quality of our decision making and those three factors I think have a lot to do with us being able to traverse that kind of speed and you uh, I know you do regular town hall meetings like regular right like yeah. every other week yes every other week since I joined why I think open communication is just so important uh, and again it comes back to this notion of managing its speed. The more optics we can provide to our employees, uh, not only what's working but what's not working, uh, the better we can all come together to improve the things that need to be improved upon or to learn from the things that are working and to continue to invest and, and share that uh, across all 26 cities that we operate around the world. One of my favorite things when I go see startups that have gotten a certain size or even public companies at a certain size is when I see employees with boxes next to their desk because it probably means they're growing so much that the business is expanding and they're moving from desk to desk to desk but it's hard to maintain a corporate culture that way mm -hmm. because the old timers have only been there for a couple of years but they're not the people at the center of things anymore. What do you do to kind of maintain that? Yeah, I was smiling just literally uh, as we look up this building to right. our left is brand new. Right. And so, yeah, we, we do have people taking on new spaces from time to time uh, but it, it really begins with culture and values ex exactly to your point and for us it's about taking the time and investing in our culture and values, defining what those mean. You know, for us, culture is the collective personality of our organization. And it's not only who we are, it's who we aspire to be. And I think uh, adding that element of aspiration gives you to permission to dream a bit about the kind of organization that you want to build. Values are the operating principles we use to make day-to-day -day decisions, which is a subset of that culture. And then once it's codified, once you understand those elements of your organization, you've got to hire against it, you got to onboard against it, you've got to do learning and development against it, you evaluate performance against it, and it's it's all about the leadership manifesting it day in and day out. It's not enough to put it on the walls. You got to live right. it. How, talk to what is it? How do you define the culture here? Uh, what, what's, what's this? Let me rephrase that. Yeah. What's this place like? Like, yeah. what's it like to work here? What are these people like? So I think if you ask me about culture, the first word that comes to mind is transformation. It's a culture of transformation, and we think about that in three ways. We think about transforming the trajectory of our employees' careers. We think about transforming our company and realizing the full potential of our platform, and we think about transforming the world and realizing our vision to create economic opportunity for every professional, where we're defining professionals as the 3.3 billion people in the global right. workforce. Uh, how do you you organize your day? So my day is, I try to break down my day across two dimensions, largely two dimensions. Uh, one is uh, coaching our people and making sure that we can get the best out of our people, that they're not just thinking about how to solve problems, but they in fact can cascade down how to solve those problems to their teams. That's how you ultimately scale. Uh, so coaching is a big part of it, and then thinking strategically, thinking proactively. So how do you find time for that, though? Program. I mean, all of us are insanely busy. I, I just can't imagine managing this kind of growth, a company that's global, stockholders, the whole deal. Like, do, how do you block out time for that thinking? It's an excellent question. So thank uh, you. That's my job. <laughs> several, yeah, several years ago, uh, recognized increasingly, I just felt like I was back on my heels with regard to the schedule. Just that there were so many things I right. had to deal with. 
And you need time to catch your breath. You need time to think proactively. You need time to be able to sit down with folks and understand what's motivating them, what they're dreaming about, what they're fearful of. That takes so much time. And so started carving out buffers on my schedule. If you were to look at my calendar right now, you'd actually see big gray spots if the Outlook calendar was printed out. And it, it's not a mistake. There wasn't a problem with the printer. I'm blocking out between roughly two hours a day, uh, 30 minute, 60 minute blocks, so I can think, so I can take the time to get that stuff right. And is, is it like an organized process of sort of this is thinking time? Is there a, you know, my kids have a spot they have to sit when they get a time out. Is there, is there, is there a thinking chair? Uh, there's not so much a thinking chair. As a matter of fact, you know, uh, we ran an influencer uh, post, which was the view from where I work, and I took a picture of uh, a place I like to walk in terms of walking one Yeah, you're a walker our, for, as am I. It's a, it's a good thing. It, it beats the heck out of sitting in the office, especially on a beautiful day like today. Well, for more on the future of LinkedIn, we're going to talk to Jeff Weiner, the CEO. So, Jeff, let's first let's talk about the Sound Solutions business. Again, it's 10 years old. Mm. It's growing so fast. What's the key? Is the key to that? I know you've got sort of ancillary things going on around it, but is the key to that just getting more and more people to put up their resumes? Uh, certainly, the the size of the network, the, the fact that we've reached critical mass, 225 million members on a global basis, growing faster than two members uh, per second, helps. I, I think the the real key is the fact people are updating their profiles when they're not looking for work. And if you think about it historically, the only time people really updated their resumes was when they were yeah, actively yeah. looking for a job. And as a result, uh, recruiters and hiring managers can search against this very large platform, this very large network, uh, for exactly the right candidate, regardless of whether or not they're actively seeking a job. They're called passive candidates. When I first uh, uh, looked at LinkedIn, as I mentioned, back in 2004, uh, the key to growth seemed to be to basic networking theory, to find the hubs, to find those people who are so connected and to get to those people. So you know, the first three people in Turkey quickly led to thousands of people in Turkey. Are there still big opportunities on the table? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and it's not just in developing economies. You know, Brazil, India, Southeast Asia, China has become one of our largest and fastest growing uh, countries as measured by uh, growth on top of the existing base. Uh, but in some of the more developed areas, uh, we see a lot of growth in Southern Europe. Perhaps uh, it's attributable to the fact you have more macroeconomic headwinds there. And oftentimes when people feel uncertain about their future, if uh -huh. they start to get concerned, they'll turn to their network. They'll turn to a platform like LinkedIn for help. Uh, do you guys, are you able to use that maybe more effectively? Are there, are, there, are there case studies of how to use, a recruiter might use LinkedIn that have helped you? Because as I've, I've talked to you about all here a lot, you've hired a lot of people that I know and some of the smarter people that I know. And I'm, I'm constantly amazed at like, wow, I can't believe they found that guy too. I can't believe they've, they hired her. Do you feel like you guys are really a, a test case for how this business of recruiting and using LinkedIn works? I, I do. As we like to say, uh, we like to eat in our own restaurant. You know, sometimes people say eat your own dog food. Yes. We like to eat in our own <laughs> restaurant, and uh, our team, our recruiting team, our hiring managers have become very adept at leveraging LinkedIn as a tool. And it, it's also interesting, Corey, we have the benefit of not only being in the business of talent, it's also our top operating priority. Right. And when those two things are in such strong alignment, it creates a, a lot of advantages. So what is the what is sort of when you talk to corporations who are starting to use LinkedIn for recruiting, what is there sort of the keys you put out there to them? Well, for companies more broadly defined, uh, it's not just about hiring. We talk about hiring, marketing, and selling. That LinkedIn can transform the way they hire, market, and sell. With regard to our talent solutions specifically, certainly passive candidate recruiting at scale is a big part of that. Also, just by virtue of posting a job on LinkedIn, uh, we're, we're able to get the right matches in front of those recruiters without them having to do anything. We can make suggestions based on our matching capabilities, our algorithmic technology, et cetera. Interesting. Okay, let's talk about marketing solutions. Because it, it's fascinating to me to watch you guys sort of enter into this media business and you're there in a very big way already, but also deal with the same struggles everyone from Time Inc. to Facebook is dealing with, with, with this change to mobile, the changing environment. Mm. What, do you, what is the change that that business is going through right now and what do you think it's going to look like two years from now? Well, m mobile has certainly been a, a game changer there. You know, about 30% of our members are now visiting us through mobile on a weekly basis and that's up considerably from a year ago. Two years ago, if you look back to the first quarter, only 8% of our members were coming through mobile. Wow, that, that is a big change. It's a big change. It's, our, it's by far and away our fastest growing product or service, and we're, we're heavily invested in those applications, taking advantage of the smartphone context and environment, our tablet applications. Uh, we recently rolled out uh, a new smartphone app, uh, four-star rating. Uh, it's doing really well. And so thinking about marketing solutions in that context, when the real estate shrinks down from a right. big desktop uh, to a smartphone, for example, we want to be very thoughtful about the member experience. We're always putting our members first. And so we're excited right now uh, about a new offering, a new marketing solutions capability. 
where for the first time quality marketers are able to get quality content into our feed, that stream of content that you're right. seeing as a member in both desktop and smartphone environments. And we're off to a strong start. We've seen uh, very high quality marketers coming on board. Uh, the content's uh, strong and the levels of engagement in particular on mobile uh, are, are certainly showing positive signs. Why'd you buy Pulse? Uh, Pulse is one of the best at what they do in terms of uh, a newsreader uh, within a mobile environment. Truly world-class team. And as we're thinking about LinkedIn as the definitive uh, publishing platform, it, it can't just be about the desktop, it's also gonna be about mobile as well. But, but do you imagine that you're in a much bigger content business ultimately, uh, prevent, pre, pre, you know, handing out all sorts of content? Yeah, we're not necessarily thinking about the content business. We're thinking about getting the right business intelligence in front of the right member at the right time. The goal is to be the essential source of professional insights. You know, SlideShare uh, also falls into that right. context as well. Uh, it's the, the visual language of business, the way in which people represent what they know through presentations, videos, etc. And it also ties back to a recent improvement we made to the profile experience, where you can now upload rich media. So it's no longer just about a text-based resume, right. it's really a portfolio. So you can show people your experiences, you can show people your skills. We're going to show people a lot more about LinkedIn, Jeff Wiener. It's good to see you, and, and, and thanks for having us down here, because this is going to be a, a really interesting deep dive in what you guys do, so appreciate it.